Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Everyone loves a good chess sacrifice. I thought what better video to make than in my opinion some of the greatest sacrifices of all time. So I've narrowed the list down to five and so I hope you guys enjoy. And this first video we're going to be looking at, it comes from the game of the century. Many of y'all may be familiar with it. Bobby Fischer playing the black pieces at this particular time was 13 years old. Just kind of coming onto the scene, wasn't really a household name. This game definitely got him on the map. His opponent is Donald Byrd playing the white pieces. Donald Byrd just the previous year had won the US Open Championship so an extremely talented player but if we look at it just kinda setting it up we have the Queen coming here. The Queen under attack here on d8. The Queen coming here to b6 and then white getting his bishop involved to c4. The Knight coming here to c3. We have the bishop to c5. After the Rook swings over here to e7 we now have the king come over here to f1 and in this particular case now is where the sacrifice comes in so I'm actually gonna pause and let you guys think about the game and what you would do in blacks point of view you can look at it his queen is under attack here on b6 definitely wants to make sure that he just doesn't give that up if we kinda look at it he has you know this rook over here on a8 it's not really doing anything so if you were black how would you continue in this particular case? Now Bobby Fischer decided to go ahead and play the crazy move of bishop here to e6, sacrificing his queen here on b6. And after the bishop takes on b6, we have one of the greatest king chases that's ever happened. So the bishop takes here on c4 check. The king is forced to move over here on g1. Very important that this rook on e8 kind of just eyes down on this e-file. The king is forced to, or after the knight comes to e2, the king is forced to move back. This knight can just continue to gobble up pieces. We have a discovered attack here every time, so the king has to come back. We have the same thing. Now the knight comes back here to c3. The king comes back again since he's being attacked, and now we have the pawn taking the bishop here on b6, also a discovered attack on the queen. The queen is forced to move after queen b4. We have the rook swing down to a4, not only attacking the queen, but also protecting the bishop here on c4. And then after the queen takes here on b6, we have the knight take here on d1. And Bobby Fischer later on would go on to win this game. If we look at it, I'll go ahead and continue the game here in a minute. But if we look at it, Bobby Fischer gave up his queen, and in return he got a rook, he got a couple minor pieces, he got a pawn, and really he just was able to just dominate the rest of the game. We have the rook over here in the h1 corner not really doing anything Bobby Fischer more than anyone really knew how to utilize all of his pieces together and if you look at from white it's really hard to recognize that this queen here on b6 is not just going to be taken and you're going to have a really good game for white so we'll go ahead and continue just so you can see the rest of the game I'm not going to give too much commentary on it just because there's another video on the game of the century if you want to watch it but we'll kind of go through the moves right here. And then after we have the king come down to g1, then it's actually a force mate from Bobby Fischer. And so we just kind of brought the king over. And eventually it was checkmate. So this is game number five in our best sacrifices of all time. Number four on our list comes back from 1911. We have White played by Ed Lasker, International Master, and then Black V played by George Thomas, also International Master. The game was actually pretty short. There's not very many moves that we have to go through before we actually get to the sacrifice itself. Also, again, do want to give an opportunity to y'all to kind of think about what should White do in this particular case. And it would be kind of crazy if you came up with it and found the entire line. But White decided to play queen takes here on h7. And what's really cool about this sacrifice, not only is White giving up the queen, but the rest of the game is forced. So the king can't come here to f7 because of the knight right here. So he's forced to take. And then the knight takes here on f6, double checking the king with both the knight and the, the bishop. That means the king has to move. There's no other way to get of a, out of a double check. The king is now forced to move here to h6. He doesn't want to come back here to h8, or it's going to automatically be checkmate right there. So again, decides to come back here and play h6. And then we have the knight to g4. Again, everything is forced. This bishop right here on d3 is crucial. 
this king can no longer retreat so the king is forced to come here to g5 as he comes to g5 we have h4 again just pushing this king down further and further we have pawn here to g3 king f3 the bishop now again all these knights, the minor pieces, the pawns, all playing together. The king comes back here. And then after the rook over here to h2, the king decides to resign. If the king were to come here to g1, then white could go ahead and castle on the queen side, and it would be checkmate. So black decided he was going to resign right at the very end uh, before white could actually have the checkmate. But brilliant brilliant move by Ed Lasker to actually see so far in advance all the different force moves bringing the king all the way from the eighth rank all the way down here to the first rank giving up a queen and just using all the minor pieces get you on the top five list of the chess websites all-time greatest sacrifices number three on our list comes back from 1928 white's gonna be played by Glinksburg black's gonna be played by Miguel Nydorf obviously has his own variation in the Sicilian defense so very very strong player in this particular case white is under attack so he plays his king here to g2 and it's black's move so take a minute think about what you would do if you were black see if you can find the best move and black actually played the move bishop here to g1 sacrificing one of his minor pieces to continue the attack on the king so after the knight takes here on g1 the queen swings down to h2 not many places for the king to move so he comes over here to f3 then the pawn pushes forward to e5 threatening just to come down with his pawn and then after the take it would be checkmate right there so the pawn takes the knight recaptures checking the king giving up a second minor piece of material and now we have the knight taking here on e5 check the king comes up here to e f4, knight check again after the king comes back. Now, pawn pushes forward to f4, threatening both. We have check here, checkmate actually, with knight here to e5. Uh, and we also have the potent attack of bishop here to g4. White decides to go ahead and take with his pawn, and then the bishop comes here to g4, the potent attack that we talked about. White does have the option of just moving and losing his queen right away in this particular game. Decided to go ahead and take this material. Again, didn't quite see the 7 to 10 moves in advance that Nydorf was. Uh, and then after the knight comes here to e5 check, after the pawn takes, then pawn over here to h5 and checkmate. What's really cool about this game is Black managed to sacrifice all four of his minor pieces, even those pieces that weren't even closely related to involved into the action, managed to sacrifice all of them for a checkmate later on to the game. So extremely, extremely good game. Really, really cool to have a very interesting way to sacrifice a bishop early on just to have an attack on your opponent's king always definitely fun to watch and earned your spot as number three on the chesswebsite.com greatest sacrifices of all time number two on our list comes back to 1858 one of my all time favorite games in chess white's played by none other than paul morphy in my opinion the greatest attacking player of all time really understood how to use all of his pieces together his opponents two guys not the greatest chess players in the world and they really found themselves playing against a opponent that was just way beyond their skill set but these two opponents are Duke Carl and Court Isarod so in this particular game white is just played and black plays pawn here to b5 white's played by Paul Morphy so take a minute just think about how you would continue with this particular setup and Paul Morphy started the attack with the knight taking here on b5, recognizing that didn't really need the knight for the attack, so sacrificed it. Then after the sacrifice, the bishop takes here on b5. Then we have the knight stopping here on d7. We have the castling, gaining the tempo with the attack here on d7. Black swings over and tries to give some assistance with his rook here on d8. And then we have an exchange here, giving up that that rook there on d7 for the knight and then after the take now we have the rook swinging over right here the knight the rook can't move because it's pinned down with the bishop right here so we have the queen trying to give some room for the king to breathe a little bit so we have the bishop take after the knight takes then the queen takes 
Ooh, and after the knight takes the queen over here on b8, then we have the rook swing in here to d8 and checkmate. So Paul Morphy pretty much just giving up the majority of his pieces because he really understood with his bishop here on g5, all he needed was something back here on d8 to win the checkmate. So again, Paul Morphy, one of my favorite players, so I'm a little bit biased, earns his spot as number two on the all-time greatest sacrifices list. Number one on our list comes from 1934. It's the Peruvian Immortal. White's going to be played by Esteban Canal, a Peruvian Grey Master. Black's going to be played by an unknown amateur. What you're about to witness is what happens when a Grand Master plays a chess amateur. Pretty much the goal for the Grand Master is how many pieces can you sacrifice and embarrass your opponent. So we'll go ahead and get into it. The start of the game is pretty normal. And we'll get to our actual position here in a second. And after the black king castles on the queen side, white decides to play a very interesting move. So take a minute, think about what you would do if you are white in this position. And Esteban decided to play pawn takes here on b4, sacrificing his rook here on a1. So the queen immediately swoops down and takes here on a1. The king has to move, so after the king take, or comes here to d2, the queen's going to swing over, starting just gobbling up material right now. After the queen takes, white decides, ah, I gave up both of my rooks, now's a good time to give up my queen. So moves his queen here to c6. Black has to take with his pawn back on c6, or, and then the bishop comes over here to a6 and checkmates. The bishop here on f4 and the bishop here on a6. All that is needed for white to kill the king. So white decided to give up both of his rooks and his queen in three moves and still checkmate his opponent. So this lands you spot on the all-time greatest sacrifices as number one on our list. Just because I think it's really incredible that someone actually played pawn to b4 and thought about that entire move order. So uh, congratulations. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, I like to do more videos like this just because I think they're fun, especially if you just enjoy chess and things like sacrifices. It's always good to see some of the old classic games and some of the greatest games that have ever been played. So hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.